What's up, YouTube? I'm back. Another video. Shout out to everybody that watched the history of black sitcoms. So this video is kind of pick up where that video left off when we're talking about the history of or kind of what happened to black reality shows, where they begin, where they shifted and where we are now. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. And also, I appreciate all the comments. Hit me in the comments. I answer back. I like the discussions. Uh, comments are well uh, appreciated. So uh, yeah, let's get into the video. This is the story of the black reality show. In today's TV landscape, there is no shortage of reality shows to watch. Whether you love them or hate them, some of your favorite stars have been created from these shows. Most of the popular shows focus on drama and gossip. There's been heavy criticism of these shows from the beginning. I do worry a little bit that the image of black women is becoming one dimensional in terms of the way the rest of the world sort of looks at us, that we're only seen as reality TV and we're not given the opportunity for a Kenya Moore to be cast in another drama. But with all the bad publicity and criticism, they're still airing every season and getting renewed with spinoffs. So who's to blame for these shows and continued dominance on these networks? So where do we start? The year is 2003. The top network had hit shows already gaining large followers. MTV had two series that had been running since the 90s, with shows like The Real World and Road Rules. According to Ranker.com, here's a list of some of the top shows in the reality show category from the earlier years of 2000s voted on by the fans. So I'm going to run down the list, kind of slowly going through the list of uh, shows from the early 2000s. So this list from Ranker.com shows some of the most popular shows from the early 2000s. But as I'm going through them, take a look at some of the popular shows. Most of them are, um, you know, feature white people, but they show a different variety of white people and white characters in the shows. Like it's not just one uh, aspect of uh, the white experience. So it's not just celebrity dating. It's uh, you might see white folks running businesses. You might see them dating. You might see them in all different uh, types of life. And um, so just uh, see how they're well represented. You might see also you see like uh, 19 and whatever that show is about the huge family. So you see uh, white families, you see dating, you see celebrities. So they're well represented when it comes to the reality shows, especially in the early 2000s. Now, when we go to showing black reality shows, it seems to lean or slant towards just uh, just like celebrities and just kind of this ratchet kind of lifestyle of celebrities drinking, fighting. We can do it I right now. Let's, Let's do it now. Come Let's do it. Come on, Let's do it. Oh, what the f*** on here, bitch? Come on. You bitch. You bitch. Oh, bitch. Look out. As you can see, the shows on the list are not aimed at black audiences. Pimp My Ride features exhibit, but the theme of the show is kind of universal. And the same with America's Next Top Model, which has Tyra Banks as the lead host. In 2003, BET created a show called How I'm Living, a black version of MTV Cribs. The show wasn't really creative or original, just uh, pretty much a straight copycat of MTV Cribs. But it's all good because, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying, they don't need rims because it's tight. And these are our cars, and that's how we live it. You know. So in 2004, BET decided to fill that gap with the first reality show that featured an all-black cast, Young College Kids, which was called College Hill. So the premise of the show was to show the black college experience on a historically black college. For extra, here's the latest. Television's first African-American reality show is back. And it just feels good to live the true college life. You are a liar. You couldn't be real good. On the surface, it sounds like a cool idea, something that could be entertaining and positive. Look, I admit, I watched the first season. I was kind of a fan of the show. During my research, I found an interview with the show's executive producer from CNN. I couldn't find any video, but I'm going to kind of read through pieces of the article, but listen how they promote the show. 
So this is Tracy Edmonds speaking. This is how she answers what's the show about. So she says, yes, we have stories that we're covering that you've never seen before. I mean, Shalandra, our sophomore, is pregnant. And so while she's navigating through the academic side of her life, she's also trying to figure out who her baby father is. So in the first reality show based on an all black cast, immediately, some of the content is focused on stereotypical negative issues attributed to the black community. In this interview, they also preview a clip from one of the cast members. Again, I don't have video, but I'll just read kind of the text from the article. So this character, I guess her name was Kinda, but this is what she says. I'm 18 and I'm a freshman. The boys on the honors dorms, they call me no draws or drawers as they spelled it. Now they've shortened it to no, because I feel that underwear is sometimes so constricting and you know, we should all just be free. So this is the start of the black reality show, which aired on BET in 2004. Now the black college experience is just one slice of the black experience. Next, black reality shows went after the topic of family. So throughout the years, the black family has been portrayed in a positive light from the sitcom era. With that continuing to the 2000s, the first show to tackle the black family life was produced by the Bravo Network, Being Bobby Brown, which aired in 2005. Here's a few clips. This show was immediately a train wreck and gained criticism from viewers. I think this was the template moving forward that has given us such shows like the Love and Hip Hop series. But back to being Bobby Brown, the viewers were not amused or entertained at the dysfunction that were shown in the episodes. Looking back at it and knowing what was to follow in the coming years for the Houston family, this was a very low point for the reality shows in general. On a more positive note, during that same year, a show based on Rev Run's family aired on MTV. Watch it. This show was a more lighthearted look at the Simmons family. BET decided to continue with the College Hill series, but as you can see, they lean more towards reality shows that focus on the family format. This list just kind of shows uh, what shows were released during those early years on BET. Also during this time period, let's not forget about such shows like MTV's Making the Band, which was a spin on ABC's Making the Band that focused on the creation of a pop group. This show featured Puff Daddy searching for talent to create his own band. Who are the five best rappers of all time? Think about it. Dylon, 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 and Dylon, because I spit hot fire. So around 2007, 2008, you notice that there is a shift in the reality show genre from the family shows and documenting, say, celebrities showing their houses and showing the, you know, behind the scenes, the life of type reality shows to more of the dating uh, reality shows. So Flavor Flav, that that whole that show right there kicked off the, the whole genre of celebrity uh, competition style dating shows and during that time also the pickup artists so that was another that was another big wave that came through the reality show TV um, landscape was the pickup artist so all that combined kind of changed the direction of reality shows and this is where we start to see a little more like risque so to so to speak more uh, ratchet TV shows and I think that's kind of where we're at now but this is where it all began in the past few years we've seen a few reality stars become more self-aware of the image that's being portrayed by the networks in the case of Tamar Braxton she refused to return at we network and wants to take a different direction the next time she returns to television. You said, hey, what if I was to tell you that Braxton Family Value was coming if? back? <laughs> no, no, and then you said, but not on a foolish network, you know? I mean, it's not really just, a so here's the thing, everybody think I declare war against a network, right? right. 
it's sort of but not really but the truth is is like I just wanted you know my family to be depicted the right way you know what I mean that's like a show creator right. you know I feel like the responsibility is mainly on me so like as creating a show I, I want to have full control right. of a show especially of a family so that's what you would do differently because that's what I would do differently. Other notable reality stars such as Nene Leakes also walked away from the Real Housewives of Atlanta brand recently. In her words, there has been a lot of emotion flying from both sides. It has been hard and I've made the very hard and difficult decision to not be a part of Real Housewives of Atlanta season 13. When a fan on Twitter asked if Bravo would ever give her a spinoff show, she replied, they don't think I deserve to work at all in any capacity. Nene revealed to Entertainment Tonight that she did not like the offer she was given. Quote, I had an offer on the table. I did not think the offer was a fair offer, she said. I wish them all the best, really, I do. But I don't think that that's the place for me. Two months later, Nene tweeted out a link to a petition to ask fans to boycott the Bravo Network. The petition alleged that the network unfairly treated their African-American talent, specifically Nene and Mariah hook from Mary to medicine. Back in September, Nini alleged there was systematic racism within Bravo and that she was not related as fairly as her white counterparts. Even though some black reality stars seem to be taking a proactive approach with their image, we still have plenty of examples of the classic reality show themes and new networks producing more shows to fill the void. The black reality shows are here to stay as long as the viewership is present. But it's up to the viewers to demand change and the producers to create well-rounded shows that show the full black experience. If anything, I hope you learned something from this video. Again, like, subscribe, hit me in the comments. I hope this starts a conversation and uh, stay tuned for the next video.